Thursday, January 13th. Thursday the 13th. Uh, we got a... Not, not, not exactly Friday the 13th, which, yeah. uh, which I should know because those days are kind of uh, fortuitous for people named Jason. But, right, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's 8.31. 9 o'clock, we got a special report from our regional correspondent, Tomas Maglotnia, mm. on the impeachment of uh, CNMI Governor Ralph Torres. That's coming up. This is right now, though. We're we'll throwing it over to Jason uh, Salas, where he's going to interview the newly elected. He's still got that fresh chairman smell. Uh, <laughs> the newly elected... Guam Chamber of Commerce uh, Chair Ed Antolani is joined by the President of the Chamber, Catherine Castro. Jason, take yeah, it away. Yeah, two, two people that I would consider friends, two people I've had the pleasure of interviewing many times over the years, uh, basically as uh, leaders in, in Guam business and everything like that. So, uh, Kathy Castro, the President, of course, of the Chamber. Good morning, Kathy. Good to see you. Good morning. It's wonderful to see you. All right. And, the, and as Chris uh, said very affectionately um, and appropriately, uh, I would also add to that probably one of the executives are on our island who has never had a bad hair day as long as I've known him, uh, Ed Antalan. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, congratulations to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jason, and thank you, Chris. Uh, you know, to, to prevent bad hair days, use a lot of gel. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, in, for, in my mind and everything like that, it's, it's you and Joe Ada, like historically on Guam and everything like that, you know. <laughs> little, you know, little okay, kids we'll like me that went to Sanchez with the dippity do, you know, really gave us something to aspire to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can go up to about 60, 70 miles an hour and not worry about it. <laughs> well, hopefully, I mean, Ed, a kind of interesting segue and everything like that is I'm assuming you would have to be going at least in fourth or fifth gear and everything like that, given, you know, the, the chairmanship that you now uh, inherit. So, you know, I mean, I've always had so much reverence for. Uh, you know, the chamber is an institution, but, you know, like uh, in, in taking over uh, the chairmanship and being elected like that, of course, obviously, you know, selected by your peers and everything like that. What are some of your your thoughts about, you know, heading into a year that some people say, you know, might be a year um, where there's a little bit more optimism than we've had in years past and everything like that after, you know, such turbulent times? Yeah. Uh, before I begin, you know, uh, Jason, I, I just want to give a plug to Christine Valero because she was the chair for two years. And uh, when we re-elected her last year, you know, we had a long discussion about it. And I, I thought it was very critical that she continue on the leadership while we go through, you know, the second year of the pandemic. And it also allowed me to kind of shadow her and prepare me to, to take over uh, as the chair. Uh, so that said, uh, you know, the this year, I think it may be a little bit tougher than what we had anticipated. Omicron kind of threw a wrench uh, into a lot of our plans, et cetera. Uh, we don't know where it's going to be. We already see inflation peaking at about 7%. Uh, you see it in the gas prices, et cetera. So one of the things we started doing, and, and, and Christine allowed me to, to work on last year, and I think it's going to be the the, the focal point of the chamber this year is we started to refresh uh, our strategic plan. The chamber can, uh, issued or prepared a strategic plan around 2017, correct me if I'm wrong, Catherine, but around 2017, and you know, they had made a lot of progress, et cetera. And during that time, there was a lot of cost-cutting measures. We moved into the new building, and then Catherine has done a, lot, a great job with just literally two, three people helping her. You know, and so this what we discovered was we took our SWAT, our strength, weaknesses, threat, and opportunity, uh, updated it, and we've you know, we, and and then what we did was we took the initiatives that were already established because we're not going to try to redo the whole strategic plan, and we kind of consolidated the initiatives into four primary uh, initiatives, and now we're really going to be focusing on the strategic plan and the initiatives to help the chamber move forward it's going to be very, very critical. And, and I think the, the chamber board towards the end discovered that there was a, a very critical part of the strategic plan that we need to implement before we can go to the other aspects. Um, if you want, I can brief you a little bit on those initiatives. Oh, please, yes. So really there's, um, we, we took these, there was five initiatives we consolidated into four. Uh, one was a sustainable chamber. Two was uh, focusing on the economic development. Three, healthy business environment. And then four, community development. And we put sustainable chamber in the uh, as the highest priority. 
um, throughout the year, and I've been on the board, I think, two years, uh, and then this will be my third year. And I, I started, you know, observing a lot of things, and I, I realized really there's a lot of pressure on Catherine, especially during the pandemic. It was very challenging for her as a president to be able to accomplish a lot of what we needed to accomplish. And, you know, uh, thanks, thank goodness for, for Christine to be able to help drive the car while Catherine was trying to do the repairs, change the tires, uh, everything else, and join her and, you know, et cetera. So when we looked at the, the, the initiatives of Sustainable Chamber, and it's really to provide a support to for the members to succeed. That, that's the objective. And what the uh, goal then was we needed to really increase the resources of the chamber. Uh, it was uh, tough last two years. You know, we've lost some membership. We've gained membership, uh, interestingly enough. Hmm. And Catherine spent a lot, a lot, a lot of time reaching uh, out to the membership virtually. But going forward, especially this year, we realized that, you know, she can't do it all. Uh, we were all getting very concerned. I was getting very concerned about, you know, I, I think we need, she needs to be able to take some time off. And if she needs to take some time off, how? So looking at the, the how to create a sustainable chamber, we had to look at it organizationally. And working with Catherine, yeah, I believe many years ago, again, Catherine, correct me if I'm wrong, you had more than four employees, right? And I think you just hired Irish this year or last year. So, but through cost cutting measures, trying to become more efficient, et cetera, uh, they reduced down to three and then she just hired a, a fourth. But I don't think that was enough. I think she needed to be able to have more support. And to yeah, be Kathy, able to- Yeah, you didn't have to take lean management like, like that literally. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly, right? Yeah. So, you know, and then looking at the other initiatives, there's no way we were able to do it. So she, you know, I sat down with her and I said, well, how many people do you need? You know, and she's like, well, and I'm like, no, how many people do you need? She gave me a number. I said, I think you need more. And then so finally she created the organizational chart, which I think will be very effective for her, in which we're looking to probably hire three other people. Excellent. You know. And, uh, and, and to be able to implement a lot of the initiatives going forward. So that's the first step. The second step is that, you know, revenues are revenues, right? And we're very cognizant about how not to overburden our membership, but the importance of the membership and the dues in, in being able to sustain the operations. Of course, two uh, key ingredients in the revenue generation uh, plan for the the um, the chamber was the gala and the golf tournament, the annual uh, events that we have. For two years, we haven't been able to do that. We're hoping this year we're going to be able to do it. That said, when we prepared a budget and we uh, had it approved yesterday by the board, it it was very conservative. Looking at what the revenue streams we had, it did include um, uh, revenues from the gala and assuming the the golf tournament we're able to to have this year, but the expense side, you know, Catherine has really done a, a great job. So, you know, there, there's a lot of fun work, and I, I think the focal point of the chamber is going to be the strategic plan, getting it ready. So, after the sustainable chamber, in which we're looking to identify additional revenue streams, such as grants or, or whatnot uh, contributions, we will see. Then comes the economic development side. And that's going to be very critical, right? How do we do it? You know, uh, and, and that's the million dollar question on how do we do it? They already have a white paper that the board has prepared through the initiative managers. And then, you know, we have to try to figure out how to implement it. What will work? We are going in through an election year. And, you know, I mean, I'll speak very frankly, you know, we need to collaborate with all the politicians, but, you know, uh, I, we were we firmly believe that the chamber is, is uh, bipartisan. We don't care what side of the party you are. I personally don't care. I know Catherine doesn't care. Our job is to be able to help the membership in whatever way, and, and that's the the focal point. But you know we need to be heard. So without disclosing too much of the plans, because I, I think we're going to have some good plans, and you're going to see it evolve over the next 30, 60 days. 
we're, we're going to be seen, we're going to be heard, and, and we have a, a great plan in mind. Well, I'm hey. sorry, Ed, if, if, if I may, and may, maybe Ed and Kathy jump in as you see fit, but, um, you know, since this is an election year, um, it has been brought up uh, in the past, or maybe political action committees uh, have been formed and everything like that. Do you anticipate here in, you know, in week week two and change of, of the year 2022, will such a committee be formed to this and, like, you know, seeking... Um, prospective candidates to, you know, convincingly say, we stand behind these, you know, these virtues, we want to get the following things done, the following, you know, tiers of, of the economy are good for us, you know, is that part of your part of your plan? Yeah, well, the political action committee will continue. Um, however, you know, the chamber doesn't go out there and support um, a particular candidate and I think the focus of the political action committee is really to key in on initiatives or issues and whether what whoever candidates will want to follow it or not so we while we we support it and provide that additional support you know the chamber is very targeted towards uh, building its membership helping its membership and helping uh, improve the economy of the island Kathy, would you answer? would you agree? I mean, and, and that, that you know that right. that's that's very very wonderful. I'm I'm sure things might get a little bit more dicey. Say if a if a particular candidate, I'm not saying anyone, I'm not nailing anybody down, but if somebody say takes a hard position on what the minimum wage should be, and everything mm -hmm. like that, then things get like a little bit more you know uh, intense, yeah. for lack of a better term. Do you what would you say to that, Kathy? Sure, of course. You know the the chamber has very specific initiatives that we um, you know hold. Uh, very tight and 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 of course uh for example your example of minimum wage you know we feel very strongly that that should be you know dictated by the market and not be legislated at all um and certainly the chamber is a huge supporter of action pack and as you well know action pack is a political action committee that was formed two years ago and there are great uh initiatives that are going to be pushed out with action pack very very soon you'll be hearing from them uh just before the end of the month so that's something to look forward to, and it's exciting. There's great things that are going to be coming out of Action Pack. I wish I could tell you, because uh, I'm super excited about it. As you can see, I'm like holding it in. Uh, <laughs> but they're going to spank me because you know, you know, Speaking they, of they, that's a separate, separate entity, right? So, um, but they they're, they're going to come out strong, and it's just going to be super exciting. So, mm -hmm. good things for the community to look out for. But certainly, the chamber, you know, there are certain key things that the chamber really espouses, right? And uh, and we're, we're the whole idea is to make sure that we uh, like what Ed said is to engage with our political um, leaders and um, community partners so that we can work together to uh, really build back our economy, right? And and yes, it's going to be a long road for tourism to rebound, but there's other things that we can do uh, uh, to to support the tourism uh, uh, industry. Um, as it rebounds slowly, uh, but uh, you know, so those are some of the things that we uh, that are that are part of the strategic plan that is being led by Ed and the board. Absolutely, and and certainly it is advantageous when you have you know uh, a board, uh, Kathy, that that is so supportive of of your endeavor. Certainly, you know, if it was an antagonistic situation and everything like that, we'd be singing a completely different tune and everything like that. But you know, kudos to the relationship that you know. You have from both sides. Um, may, may I ask the both of you: Is there any heading into this year for the benefit of the membership? Is there anything thematically that you know you've tried to uh, like put forth and just say you know like this will be kind of like the rallying cry for our our membership collectively this year? Um, you know, we it, everything's tied to the strategic plan. We have deliverables and deadlines, etc. So we, we we do have time. Uh, releases etc so like with Catherine there's so much I, I want to kind of release mm -hmm. but in, for the benefit of the board members particularly some of the new board members that are, have got, uh, just joined us you know we've asked them to get uh, involved directly in the strategic plan uh, because we Catherine myself we cannot do it alone and we've got a great board that is uh, stepping up already wanting to take a lead on this initiative that initiative so all I could say and uh, is um, that the chamber is going to become more visible and the important message that we're going to be really 
presenting is that we represent uh, over 400 some uh, businesses on the island. We have estimated maybe about 30, 40,000 employees. And that means a lot. So our objective is purely to, uh, for the benefit of the membership and the business community. And we don't want to separate minimum wage and employees from businesses because the, the, you know, the people have the perception that, oh, we're just, what we just care about is business, business, business. Well, the businesses, um, the backbone of all the businesses are the employees. Without the employees, we can't do anything. So we're going to be presenting a lot of things tying in the positions of the chamber, really for the benefit of the island and for the small business community and ultimately the employees behind that. Outstanding. I would say that that's saying a lot too, um, you know, when you say the chamber is going to be even more visible considering, you know, uh, the considerable presence that you've always had, like in the community at large anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I'm, I'm really excited because, um, you know, uh, the, the, the details that we went down in, in the strategic plan, and forgive me if I'm just completely throwing into strategic plan, but not at all. I can't wait really, to read this. Yeah, the plan is really what lays everything out, you know, and what we want to do and what we want to try to accomplish. I was just thinking this morning, I said, man, the, the challenge a chairman has is we only have really have 11 months to implement uh, something. You know, and then that's tough, you know. So in addition to trying to uh, implementing the strategic plan to develop succession, to be able to develop the uh, and support Catherine, that this mission continues despite the change. You know, the board members change constantly. Catherine stays. So it's very critical that we get her set up to continue on the mission without, you know, me or Christine or whoever. Mm -hmm. It's really Catherine and the chamber staff that's going to carry on the mission. Well, that having been said, Kathy, could you could you uh, give us a date of when this uh, this strategic plan will be you know uh, announced, put forth, and maybe be be available for for review? Now, now I'm thinking there's two really big things I'm looking forward to this year. It's checking out the Guam Chamber of Commerce's strategic plan and finally watching Top Gun two, whenever that comes out. <laughs> Hopefully, yours will be out before that one because that one's hit like significant delays. But we'll that's another conversation. <laughs> Well, as Ed, as Ed did mention, it'll probably be within the next 90 days. So okay. um, we'll probably hear, uh, you know, we, uh, we will always uh, present the strategic plan to the membership. Uh, and so uh, we'll be looking out for maybe the February or the March general membership meeting uh, to have uh, at least uh, an announcement and uh, a summary of how this is going to be moved forward. We're so, we're so excited. There's just been such a refresh of our committees and um, our activities and our programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, there's something about 2022 that there's just a, uh, a little bit of some magic in the air. I don't know what it is. I think it's just, we're just, we're just scrambling to get out of this pandemic madness. And, um, and I just think that 2022 is the year to do that. And the, the, the excitement is here within, even within the, the chamber staff, um, uh, there's just uh, the, this idea of the refresh of our of our plan. Uh, it's just a lot of excitement here. So uh, we, we are looking forward to doing great things uh, in 2022. That really is, is sincerely abundantly clear on your part, Kathy, because I know as long as you've been coming on, you know, the two years we've been doing this show, you know, in in the begin the early stages of the pandemic, you know, you even said, you know, it was almost like an existential crisis that the yeah. chamber itself as well as its members had and then it was okay like a survival mode and then playing defense and and now you're looking at the year and you know projecting uh like you said you know opportunity and uh uh things that you can capitalize on and room for expansion and room room for growth so how do you properly communicate this to the membership who you know may, might still be a little bit tenuous and they were like you know my you know my balance sheet is isn't where i want it to be and everything like that how can i get as optimistic as, as you guys are. Well, like, you know what? I get my optimism, Jason, is I get it from the U.S. Chamber. I get it from the AmCham's of Asia Pacific, right? Everybody is moving on. They have to. You have to because you can't stay stagnant and you can't not do it because you, you know, your economy will, will not do well, right? And so I have such an affinity. I just, I just have 
you know, so much faith in, in our Guam community. And um, I love the chamber. Obviously, I've been here all of these years, and I wouldn't be here if I didn't love doing what I do, right? And I just feel so strongly that um, being in our island community, being here on Guam, being with the people that we are, um, that we uh, are not going to be put down. We will continue to move forward. And, um, and look forward to good good things to come. And the US Chamber, the AmChams of Asia Pacific, that's just been the battle cry of, you know, we're, we're doing this, we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. See, that's the kind of infection we need in the community, not the coronavirus. We, we need that kind of that kind of pragmatic optimism, I would say. And, you know, and you're talking about achievable goals too. This isn't, you know, you know, pie in the sky dreams and everything like that. This is something that we can do. Yes, indeed, indeed. And I think that there's, I think that the business community, the private sector, and even, you know, even our partners in the government, they're ready. They want, they want to move beyond this crisis, right? We're, we're, you know, uh, that's, that's also yesterday. We've got to move forward. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Now, if, if I may ask uh, Ed, Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, we experienced like, you know, these little uh, of course, you've, you've got lingering issues that, you know, have to uh, require your attention and everything like that. But then new things tend to bubble up, like, you know, the supply chain issues um, of late. When it comes to, you know, those kind of things, how do you address them? How do you, um, you know, make sure that everybody stays, you know, like on um, communication lines are open between yourself and the management and the members and everything like that and hopefully address these, you know, to the satisfaction of everybody? Well, you know, when, when, when you mentioned supply chain, that was one of the, the causes of uh, the inflationary impact we're, we're uh, um, feeling right now. And what it takes is not only communication and, uh, to the membership, but we have to communicate with the government. Uh, the government has to play a key part, but the government cannot do it alone. You know, the membership has to, and the business community has to all step in. Um, how do we get around that? You know, it, it's, it's, we really need to, as a group, focus in on what we need to be able to sustain the island. The, the government's got a lot, a lot, a lot of money. How to get that out effectively is going to be the key. And what the right answer is, you know, I mean, you know, that's, uh, that's up for discussion. And, uh, but you have to use that effectively. I, I lean on my experience with um, the Guam Economic Development Authority. Remember, Jason, I think uh, you might have interviewed me back years ago. I have. Then. Yeah, you were a younger guy then with a lot of darker <laughs> hair. But, hair, um, hair, was, hair was a little bit more like your color. <laughs> these, these, these days, it's way more salt and pepper, I got to say. Yeah, <laughs> well, it, it's there. That's just why the, the, the jail hides it. Anyhow. <laughs> You know, I remember uh, one of my mentors, uh, Senator, uh, the late Senator Paul Berdali, mm -hmm. and one of the keys to economic development and diversification, hey, it, it's challenging, it's difficult, especially when you're in an island that, you know, we have the military, we have construction, we have government, but the government is tied to whatever economic activity, and then you have tourism, right? Those are the revenue streams that brings it in. Though we've already discovered through the pandemic, I mean, we've been through typhoons and stuff, and we've been able to, we're, we're so resilient, we can come out of it. Pandemic has just caused uh, us to start to rethink how to do things uh, differently. So what we have is the opportunity now with the government having a lot of money, how do you spend that effectively to be able to continue the economy, to sustain the economy? Because the money will run out, that's key. And how to do that, I, I remember, what he was, we were talking once with uh, Paul and I, you know, that we, we can talk about diversification, we can talk about economic development, but it's a lot harder when we realize that everyone else is going after the same type of markets, particularly in the tourism side. So, you know, one of the things that he had mentioned to me, and, I, and I'll never forget that, is that you must be able to build, create a quality of life not only for our people, but for those who want to come and visit mm -hmm. and for those who want to come and invest. How you define quality of life is going to be the key for the chamber and especially for our government leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just throwing money in the pocket, but what will attract them to come to our island? Why would anybody want to come to our island versus, I mean, sun, sand, all that stuff. 
So, you know, um, I, I think this is going to be the most important thing we're going to have to present this year. And from the chamber side, we're going to be focusing in, on our initiatives and how to work towards that quality of life. That's a big, that's deep quality of life. So, we, we, and, and again, you know, you guys have like, you know, really, really teased the fact that this strategic plan when it comes out is, is going to be big and have big impacts and everything like that. So I'm maybe, is it fair to say that this is really going to be the first year when the chamber will really put a lot of, of work towards finally getting economic diversification, like you said, you know, so it's, it's not all hinged, um, you know, so, solely on tourism. Yeah, no, yeah, and you're you're right. I mean, you know, when you do a strategic plan, right? You you have to understand your weaknesses, and there are facts that that um, that the island and that we have to realize. Tourism is going to always be uh, a main source. Can we develop anything out of outside of tourism? Well, you you've got a lot of other areas going after the same type of industries. So how do we build that? What in my discussions with a lot of the business community members and, and investors, et cetera, it's all towards the quality of life. What will bring somebody to come to Guam? You can't ask an investor to come to Guam if the quality of life is not there, right? I mean, you can give him the taxes and census, et cetera, but you need the quality of life to be able to, to final check mark. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a, good a point. place I want to be. That's the place I want to be. So, you know, how we diversify, we, we've got a, a lot of uh, plans. We've got a lot of, uh, I think, a white paper under the economic development side and also tied with one of the governor's uh, initiatives, in fact, really designed around that. But then we have to prioritize, you know, which comes first, what's the easiest. But no matter what, it's tied to the quality of life. If you don't provide a quality of life, not only for the people, but for anybody who wants to come in here, you can give them all the tax incentives. It ain't gonna work. Okay. Yeah, Kathy, what are, what are some of your uh, your final thoughts and everything with this? Um, you know, it seems like this is really gonna be this this grand strategy. You know, going forward with the chamber and everything. It's like Ed was kind of like indicating quality of life will maybe be like you know the New Testament. It's gonna take up like that much of the uh, <laughs> you know that that much of the strategic plan. Right? I mean, if if, if it, no, and in, indeed that is such a big part. You want to spend a lot of time like re really reinforcing that point, but. Uh, operationally carrying out, you know, that plan and executing on that plan and everything like that. Like, uh, what do you foresee, Kathy, as some of uh, some of the challenges, but then also some of the things that, that, again, you're looking forward to really starting to work on and really seem, uh, really see come to fruition? Wow, that's a uh, that's a tough question for me, Jason. I just think that, um, you know, as you know, you mentioned the New Testament. I'm a very faithful person, absolutely, and um, I take every day for that day, right? I try. What I try to do is, you know, you know, the past is in the past. Tomorrow is, you know, it's for God to determine what that is. And today, I'm I'm gonna do the best that I can with the resources that I have to be to do the job that I need to do and to be the best person that I can. And so, um, you know, as I look forward into, uh, uh, you know, uh, pushing this strategic plan and, 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 and having it come to fruition, I'm, I'm excited that we, are, we get to um, look to our 100 years in the next two years with a solid staff, with a solid organization, and a um, and a growing and sustainable economy that makes Indo-Pacific, you know, that is going to be the jewel of Indo-Pacific region. That's going to have uh, the Asia Pacific people, um, you know, want to be uh, part of Guam, and uh, to have our brothers and sisters in the United States, you know, stand up a little taller and be you know, uh, proud of who we are and what we do and how we represent our uh, United States and, and how we represent the, the beautiful island of Guam. And I, you know, I just, I'm, I'm so excited to be a part of what makes Guam beautiful and unique and, and, and gorgeous in the eyes of our people and the eyes of our creator. And I, 
you know, I'm just blessed to be able to say that and to be able to be part of it. So absolutely. Very, very well said, Madam President. Well done. Well, well, like they say, the best way to lead is from the front. So, you know, it's abundantly clear again that, you know, like the people that are running the chamber right now, um, you know, are the are the best men and women for the job. So, um, Mr. Chairman, Madam President, again, we wish you uh, the very best as we head into into what's going to be a uh, hopefully a year filled with uh, filled with opportunity and us being able to uh, to realize like some of those goals. So w- once you get that that plan and everything like that, please send, send me first. WhatsApp it, email, you know, like whatever like that. That's 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 going to be a exciting reading. One last quick plug, Jason. Yes, please. And, you, know, you know why God put uh, our eyes in the front? What's that? To always look forward. Ah. Behind. Amen. <laughs> Very good. Amen. Okay. That's 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 a uh, that's Ed Antalan, uh verse book book one chapter uh, <laughs> chapter three verse fifteen. No, 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 no. <laughs> Well, maybe right, maybe, in, maybe in that strategic plan, we'll start like a, the, the book of Ed, maybe. I don't know. You know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> there, there's definitely got to be a book of Kathy, you would think, you know, given, given oh. her tenure. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 yeah, well, th- thank, statue. yeah, well, thank you both. And we, and we applaud you for <laughs> your vision you. and, you know, best of luck in executing this plan. And we will definitely talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, All right. Jason. All right. Take thanks, care, Kathy. Guys. Thanks, Ed. All right. Stay tuned, everybody. Tomas Manglonia has his special report on the impeachment of Governor Ralph Tor-